If you clicked on this video, you probably want to know what are the best trade nations in EU4, and that's exactly what we're going to answer here today, live, okay? We're doing it live. Well, you're probably not watching this live because it's on YouTube. First off, obviously, this video would not be complete without the Venetians. Venice, as everybody knows, is a great trading nation. With the 1.34 patch, the idea change makes Venice probably the second best trade nation in the game itself because of the extra trade steering. First, let's speak here we got the uh ideas trade power trade efficiency and that's it just these two ideas as the venetians so they're not really great right now they're gonna get updated in 1.34 and they're gonna be a lot more better but venice is uh, a special type of government it is the venetian government that offers extra merchant and look at all the juicy things that it can also do it has the ability to get plutocratic ideas which are amazing for trading it can create trade posts trade leagues trade cities i'm pretty sure you guys never even create those be honest right now be honest trade cities let's go into that right have you ever seen this button over here this is how you create a trade post trade post gives you local trade power plus 10 and it only cost 50 admin and you can only get one in this area so keep that in mind but trade power plus 10 at the start is a massive amount if you're a trade republic and especially if you have an end node like the venetian one and you want to filter shit from the ragusa node in the venetian node or from just any node into your node and use it for 50 admin it's 100 worth it then we also have the ability to create trade cities essentially trade cities are cities that you create like there you go we created istria here we formed a new city here it is the city of istria it offers us its trade power but it is not a vassal it is in the trade league as us but it's not a vassal and it has our government reform the serene republic say what you will about it you can diplo vassalize them if you have the relations for it actually you cannot because it's a trade city you can ally them and then if you want you can kill them and vassalize them i guess i don't know to be fair trade cities is one of those niche things that it's not great but it's just there so you can do it's an option for you to do i don't think anyone's ever built trade cities though it's totally not any sort of a meta next up on this list is gonna be hamburg because hamburg also is a great trade city it has a massive amount of trade power in the uh, lubeck trade node at the start it starts with 41 trade power it is also a free city not a trade city so you get def cost reduction trade efficiency plus 10 as well you can potentially develop this province and get even more trade goods produced in your node you can build a lot of ships and then get more of that trade power for yourself the problem is that you need to expand a little bit as the hamburgie in order to get more trade power which is not a problem for the next nation on this list that's right i'm talking about the hanseatic league or lubeck which starts with a whopping 18 percent of the lubeck trade node i guess that's why they call it the lubeck trade node right aside from the massive trade value that they have in this node they also have 23 trade power significantly less than the uh, nation of hamburg but because of its mission tree you can get an extra 15 and 25 percent modifier in the L city of lubeck with lubeck you can unite the league so every single nation that is in your trade league doesn't have to be a vassal just in your trade league they become your vassal after you click this button if they're in the trade league they automatically become a vassal so invite the hundred nations to the trade league before you click this button and then the name changes to the hanseatic league and you get one extra diplo relations oh and all these uh nations they get lubeck they get you as a historical friend so there's that as well ideally when you click that button you want bremen hamburg riga stetten if possible maybe some cities in here if they're one province miners that would be great as well one of my personal favorite trading nations is ragusa and it's not because of uh the fact that they have these idea sets these idea sets are shit trade efficiency trade power abroad domestic trade power that's average at best not even that great but eventually after you form dalmatia and let me just uh, debug it in so you see what i'm talking about form dalmatia yes please get the new ideas the dalmatian ideas are mwah, ooh la la, they're the creme de la creme so you get trade efficiency morale of armies and morale of navies then you also get uh, national unrest and as well as reform progress growth trade power abroad dev cost reduction and institutions 
spread, infantry combat ability, naval force limit, and core creation cost. So essentially these ideas are great, not only for trade, they're also great for expansion, they're also great for military, they're also great for playing tall, probably one of my favorite idea sets. And all you need to do in order to form Dalmatia is get these two provinces from Venice, which honestly is quite easy, especially if you just wait for the right timing when the Venetians are at war with the Ottomans essentially. I have a video on Dalmatia, you guys should check out in the description. Now aside from that, uh, the position of Ragusa slash Dalmatia is great because in the Ragusa node you have the option of cucking over the Venetians, the Genoese and the Hungarians and uh, making sure that your node here stops all of this uh, juicy money from going in the other nodes. But let's face it, as Ragusa, if you do play as them, you want to take over the Venetian node. So you want to kill Venice, replace them and then make the Venetian node your main trade node, which is actually super doable. And then after you do that, you can filter in all of the Constantinople node, the Aleppo and the Alexandrian node, which can boost you up to about 50 ducats in the 1550s, which means around 100 ducats that you would be getting based off of your trade efficiency and so on. Gujarat is one of the best, if not the best trade nation in the Indian subcontinent. Why is that? Well, first off, the Gujarat trade node prevents all of the Indian node from uh, filtering outside. So that means if you have 100% of the trade value here, you essentially can stop this Indian node from going into Europe, from going into Arabian lands, from going into Africa, and you can keep it all for yourself. And it's really strong from the beginning, 5.8. Plus, remember, if you conquer the rest of India, you get all of this in the south, and you get this as well, you get this and all that. Of course, you can easily stop the northern node from filtering it outside as well. What makes uh, Gujarat so great? First off, Gujarat is one of the few nations that starts with a Zoroastrian province in Daman. And if you form Zoroastrian Gujarat, that's the best Gujarat, okay? Zoroastrian, not only does it also have extra trade efficiency and uh, it has the aspects that help with that a little bit as well, but the mission ideas as Gujarat also help you with that. It is a nation that has its mission trees revolving around mercantilism and around being a merchant nation, right? So you got here the merchants of Gujarat that offer you the event, the Jain and Hindu merchants community. I'm gonna let you guess what that is because you should play this nation. And I have a video for it, Zoroastrian Gujarat, check it in the description. Eventually you get a lot of claims, but not only claims, you get a lot of money and a lot of opportunities for expanding in the African area with permanent claims on the rich gold mines of Tanzania. Regardless, with Gujarat, you can have a massive empire stretching from the Indian subcontinent to the east coasts of Africa and the south tips of Arabia. And if you know what you're doing, you can filter in all the nodes so that you basically cucked the Europeans and they're getting no money from Asia or at least no money from India and no money from the south tips of Arabia and East Africa. Next up, we're going to be talking about Novgorod, a true merchant republic. Novgorod in 1.34 has seen some massive changes, which, for example, they got the really great new government reform amongst other things. Aside from that, Novgorod has the ability to uh, get these Strelsi units like the Muscovites, so they're a great military nation, but but they're also a great trade nation. Idea-wise, the ideas don't really reflect that as much. You get missionary strength, republican tradition, trade power plus 5% in merchants. Not bad, but not amazing. Manpower, privateer efficiency, and so on. They're decent. You probably want to switch to the Russian ideas whenever you form Russia. But here's the thing, right? You get this awesome mission tree that offers, I think, around 20 or something mercantilism alone. I mean, we have two mercantilism as well as 30% trade steering and ship trade power for 20 years from this mission. Another one diplomatic relations from here. Two mercantilism from this one and trade power. Two mercantilism as well and trade efficiency. Five mercantilism and until the end of the game, dev cost reduction, prestige, number of buildings and institutions spread in the province of Novgorod. We also get another two mercantilism from this mission and permanent claims. Republican tradition prestige. Again, mercantilism and claims on Memel and Danzig and shipbuilding time sailors and so on and Riga. Yeah, okay, there you go. So we counted 15 mercantilism you get from all these missions here and the great part is you can do all these missions before you form Russia plus you have the uh, Vesha Republic that offers one extra merchant and governing capacity and like the Venetians you get the ability to get the extra trade posts for 50 admin points that increase your trade power and you can block off the uh, Novgorod trade node so you get all of the uh, Siberian trade filter into here and then you stop it from going in the Baltic so you can make this a pseudo end trade node in Novgorod easily can do this I also want to make 
make an addendum here and talk a little bit about Genoa. Genoa is a great trade nation. Well, I don't want to say a great trade nation. It is a trade nation, that's for sure. I have to say that Genoa is a special nation because it's a very situational and very RNG dependent nation. Obviously, it starts with a lot of trade power in the Genoese trade node. The city of Genoa gives way for the Genoese trade node, right? And that's why they start with 52 trade power, which is the highest amount. So if you really want to push this, you can just promote trade and you start with 60 trade power in the Genoese trade node right but yeah the point is that you do have a lot of trade power in the Genoese trade node but you still need to expand in order to get a little bit more and here's why I kind of like Genoa because you do have provinces outside of the Italian peninsula you got provinces in Lesbos and Schio you got provinces in the Azov Sea so you could technically start expanding in the Azov area you can start vassalizing Byzantium making your way into the Balkans so from these areas you can start filtering stuff in the Genoese trade node thus making the Genoese trade node really rich, you actually start with 15% of the trade node in uh, Crimea, which is significant, not gonna lie. Realistically speaking, this gets uh, wasted because it filters into Constantinople. And because it does not filter out of Constantinople, this is a complete and utter waste here. So unless you're collecting in Crimea, you don't want to be using your merchant there until you have at least 50% of the Constantinople node and then filter in, filter in, and then you filter all the way into the Genoese area. Even even 30% is worth it, I'd say. I say Genoa is a long-term trade nation because it takes a while before you uh, put into effect all of your trade bonuses, let's say, but definitely an interesting run if you do start as a Genoa. I'm going to pass on the torch of probably the best trade notion, notion, yes, trade notion, trade nation to Malacca. Why is Malacca such a great trade nation, you ask? That's a great question. Well, first off, Malacca does start in the Malacca node, which is one of the richest trade nodes at the start 14.4 ducats and if you know what you're doing and you filter in stuff from the rest of asia and malacca and you can do that and then you just stop it from filtering outside of malacca which is easy to do well then you can potentially have hundreds of ducats just from this one trade note here and that's what most players do in the end game or the mid to late game for that matter aside from that malacca itself starts with some pretty decent trade ideas you get trade power plus 10 as well as one merchant and you also get 20 percent trade steering guys do not underestimate how important trade steering is and how valuable this modifier is. Trade steering is a very fixed thing based on the nation because of the way that the game is coded, but better to have it than not have it, I guess. And you also get ship trade power plus 20%, and this is where it starts to get interesting, right? Because as Malacca, you can potentially have 50 trade ships early on in the game, and you get the 20% trade power from here, you get the extra 33% trade power from your boarding doctrine here, the naval doctrine, sorry, and you can add to it a flagship that offers extra extra ship trade power per ship, one plus per ship. So essentially you can probably get a monopoly on the uh, Malacca node very, very easily. Not to mention you will obviously be expanding and killing everybody here before the 1500, right? So you will have most of this node as it is, even without having to send extra ships. And then you can just send the extra ships to filter in more of the uh, Chinese money into your node. So you can get all the juicy stuff from uh, all the way Beijing into the south, getting all them rich Ducatan boys. So give Malacca a try. Definitely an underrated nation. Not many people play as them and uh, they're a unique nation to play as as well. Plus they have their own mission tree, right? They got since the Leviathan DLC a pretty, pretty vast mission tree here. I believe the champion alongside Malacca is uh, Holland. Obviously Holland has the option of uh, starting in the uh, English channel, which has 13.4 ducats at the start. Can get up to 100 ducats by the 1550s depending on the colonial filters. As the Dutch you can literally have more than 70% of this node from just having the Dutch provinces you don't need to have the North French provinces or the English provinces trade wise this is the ultimate trade nation let's face it and you also have a lot of great trade ideas you get trade efficiency plus 15 as well as a naval force limit plus 50 and this is important because 50% naval force limit means you can get 50% more trade ships in the trade node to help you out with it you also get inflation reduction, merchant plus one, and trade range plus 10%. Dev cost reduction, so you can play tall as well. Increase the trade value and trade power in your node. The mission tree is okay. It doesn't have that many trade-focused uh, missions, let's say. Let's face it, man. You have the best 
provinces here. I mean, trade power up 18 from the start, trade power 19 from the start. And with the goods produced modifier plus 10% global from uh, the Dutch polders, this nation is the nation to play as. So if you guys enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and check out my Twitch channel. Link in the description and the comments section as well. I, uh, I do stream once in a while and I'd love to see you guys over here.